Childhood emotional neglect is often an invisible wound, one that can profoundly affect your adult relationships without you even realizing it. And this form of neglect occurs when a child's emotional needs are consistently ignored or dismissed, leaving them feeling unseen, unheard, and unvalued. In today's video, we are going to explore how childhood emotional neglect impacts adult relationships and what you can do to heal from its effects. What is childhood emotional neglect? Well, it happens when parents or caregivers fail to respond adequately to a child's emotional needs. Unlike physical neglect or abuse, emotional neglect is often subtle and it can be harder to recognize. It's not about what was done to you, but rather what wasn't done. What was missing? This is what it's about. So children who experience emotional neglect often grow up feeling that their emotions don't matter that they are not important or that they are not worthy of love and attention. And these feelings can carry over into adulthood, affecting how you relate to others and how you view yourself in relationships. Sign number one, difficulty identifying and expressing emotions. This is one of the most common effects of childhood emotional neglect. This difficulty in identifying and expressing emotions. As a child, you may have learned to suppress or ignore your feelings because they were not validated or acknowledged by your caregivers. And as an adult, this can make it hard for you to understand what you're feeling or to communicate your emotions to others. And in relationships, this can lead to misunderstandings, frustration, and a sense of disconnect. You may well struggle to express your needs or your desires. You might feel overwhelmed by emotions that you don't fully understand. This can create a barrier to intimacy and make it difficult for you to form deep, meaningful connections with others. Sign number two, fear of intimacy. Another common effect of childhood emotional neglect is a fear of intimacy. And if your emotional needs were not met as a child, you may have learned to protect yourself by keeping others at a distance. This can manifest as difficulty opening up to others, fear of vulnerability, or a tendency to avoid close relationships altogether. In adult relationships, this fear of intimacy can create a cycle of loneliness and isolation. And you may find yourself pushing people away even when you crave that connection or you might struggle to maintain relationships because you're afraid of getting hurt. And this fear of intimacy can make it really, really hard for you to trust others and to let yourself be loved. Sign number three would be low self-esteem and self-worth. So children who experience emotional neglect often grow up with a deep-seated belief that they are not worthy of love or attention. That's the message that they interject because they didn't get it, so therefore they weren't worthy of it. I think I mentioned this in a video before where I went on about the Kleinian paranoid schizoid possession. You know, this kind of, um, uh, it's this kind of black and white thinking. Um, oh, what was it now? You're, you're all good, so therefore I'm all bad because you're not meeting my needs. Or I'm all good, or you're not meeting my needs, so therefore my needs, so therefore you're all bad, which makes me all good. Okay, so it's this kind of like cut and dry kind of like like the term paranoid schizoid position in your head. This is your paradigm. So, um, what, but what this can actually do is lead to low self esteem and low self worth, which can have a profound impact on your adult relationships. And you might find yourself constantly seeking validation from others, or you might settle for less than you deserve because you don't believe you're worthy of more. You might even struggle with feelings of inadequacy or you may have difficulty accepting love and attention from others because you don't believe you deserve it. So low self-esteem can also lead to codependency where you place your worth and value in the hands of others, relying on them to make you feel good about yourself. So this is external stuff. And this can create unhealthy dynamics in relationships and make it very difficult for you to stand up for yourself or even set boundaries. Sign number four, difficulty setting boundaries. Children who experience emotional neglect often grow up without learning how to set healthy boundaries. And as an adult, this can make it difficult for you to assert your needs, say no, or protect yourself from being taken advantage of. And in relationships, this can lead to feelings of resentment, frustration, and burnout. You might even find yourself constantly putting others' needs before your own, or you might struggle to maintain a sense of self because you're always trying to please others. Without healthy boundaries, it's really easy to lose yourself in relationships and to feel overwhelmed by the demands of others. 
Sign number five, difficulty trusting others. If your emotional needs were not met as a child, you may have learned to rely on yourself and to distrust others. And this can manifest as difficulty trusting others in relationships, a tendency to be overly self-reliant, or a fear of being let down in adult relationships. Uh, this lack of trust can actually create a sense of distance and disconnect, and you might find it hard to rely on others, or you may have difficulty believing that others have your best interests at heart. And so therefore this can make it challenging to build close supportive relationships and to feel secure in your connections with others. How to heal from childhood emotional neglect. It, this is a journey that you're gonna have to undertake. It's not something that can be done overnight. It's one that can lead to a healthier, more fulfilling relationships. And I'm gonna take you through a few steps to begin, uh, to help you begin the, the healing process. Number one, Acknowledge your feelings. Start by acknowledging and validating your emotions, first of all, because obviously someone then and there didn't do it for you, didn't help you uh, learn this skill. So allow yourself to feel and express your feelings, even if it's uncomfortable. Journaling, therapy, or talking to a trusted friend can help you process your emotions and understand them better. Work on your self-esteem. Build your self-esteem by recognizing your worth and your value. Practice self-compassion. Focus on your strength and challenge your negative self-beliefs. Challenge it, you know, I'm this, I'm that, I'm unlovable, I'm a failure, I'm da, da. Challenge it, really challenge it. Pick it all up and challenge it. Um, you can set affirmations, maybe some mantras, uh, engage in therapy, engage in activities that make you feel good about yourself. These can all help you rebuild your sense of self-worth. Practice setting and maintaining healthy boundaries in your relationship. But this starts with deciding what they actually are. What do you want for yourself? How do you want to be treated? What behavior are you willing to tolerate? What behavior are you not willing to accept? How are you going to be with other people as well? So this means saying no when you need to assert your needs and protecting your emotional and physical well-being. So setting boundaries can be challenging, but it's also essential for creating healthy, balanced relationships. Develop trust. Work on building trust in yourself and others. Uh, this might involve taking on small steps uh, to rely on others asking for a little bit of help, letting someone else take over for a bit, being honest and open in your relationships and allowing yourself to be vulnerable because trust is built over time and it's okay to take it slow. I mean, in therapy, obviously you build a trusting relationship with a therapist, but I also do it with the equine side of my practice. You know, maybe even do that. You know, the client builds a trusting bond with the horse or whatever animal you decide to build a trusting relationship with. You know, it can be actually quite powerful stuff. Seek support because healing from childhood emotional neglect can be difficult, but you don't have to do it alone. Consider, again, seeking therapy or joining a support group where you can connect with others who have had similar experiences. And a therapist can provide guidance and support as you work through your feelings and build healthier relationships. So, childhood emotional neglect. It can have a profound impact on your adult relationships, but it is never too late to heal. And by recognizing the signs, by working on your self-esteem, setting boundaries, developing trust, and seeking support, you will, you will break free from the patterns of the past and create healthier, more fulfilling relationships. If you found the video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel. Uh, please share your own experiences or ask questions in the comments. I will endeavor to get around to everybody. Just remember you do deserve to be in a relationship where your feelings are respected and your emotional needs are met. You can say no. You can put yourself at the center sometimes. Um, these are all healthy things to do. So uh, as always, uh, until I see you next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.